hello there welcome back i have prakash talk to this side and uh, i'm going to continue with this advanced level framework course uh, on selenium test automation so what i spoke in my couple of last session is course introduction what and all we are going to talk uh, how it is going to be different as compared to the basic level framework what i spoke earlier and what application under test i'm using and the test cases which i'm going to automate definitely it is couple of test cases only but that should give you a, a real time examples of how it happens in industry okay uh, before i jump to my third video where i am going to create a folder structure folder structure uh, let me quickly take you through my basic level framework where you can find it so you can go to github.com and under my repository you can find this particular framework basic selenium test automation framework okay even if you go to youtube and look out for my channel automationtalks.com you should be able to easily find it okay and on github repository you see the complete code as well as the location of my youtube links basically complete youtube links for all 24 videos okay where i did explain it in detail step by step how to create this complete framework okay now for advanced level framework a uh, few uh, um, some some structure we are going to copy it from this uh, framework itself but let's see how it is going to be different from uh, the basic level framework Okay, so now let me jump into my Eclipse IDE and let me create a uh, folder structure, in fact a project. So this is my basic framework which I am going to minimize. I will click on new and uh, let me go to Maven project. So I will go to other and I will search for Maven project and uh, should be fine, simple project, workspace location default let me click on next let me give some name so uh, uh, ideally we should give name something like uh, com or org or io something like that io dot uh, my org name let's say i'm giving automation talks okay and uh, under artifact id it should be like your project name what project is about okay so what i'll do is i'll say advanced advanced level and i'll say dot or uh, yeah dot should be fine advanced level dot uh, I can give it as let's say QDPM. Okay, so, so this QDPM is the dummy application which I'm going to automate, and advanced level is a type of framework basically what I'll call. Okay, so this version I don't worry. This is uh, required when you are planning to export your project, could be as a jar file, var file, or whatever. So I don't want, uh, I'm not going to do so. That is required from development point of view. Packaging is again, I'm not going to worry. Again, it is required from development point of view if you are going to export your project and deploy it somewhere. Not required for me. I'll simply click on finish. And yeah, so here you can see it has created a project structure folder structure basically which is the first advantage of using maven it creates a good folder structure so i see four folders source main java source main resources test java and test resources i am going to use all four folders in fact it is not necessary to use all four you can even write a complete code into one source folder but ideally we should write it in uh, we should segregate it in uh, different different folders so as it makes my framework more uh, maintainable more readable and easy to understand and these folders are meant for some specific purpose which we are going to use it for okay now if i go to the main heart of your maven project that is pom.xml now in pom.xml as of now i don't see anything except my group id artifact id and version okay now what and all we do add in pom.xml you should have idea from my uh, earlier uh, framework right so what and all we do main thing we do is we add plugins so as of now we don't need any plugin as of now but what we need is we need dependencies dependencies okay because i am going to use selenium into my uh, project so i need selenium dependencies i am going to use let's say apache poi so i would need poi dependencies i am going to use something called as mail api so i would be ne needing mail apis etc okay so i'll be adding all of them under dependencies part okay now uh, let me get all these things from my earlier project what i'll do is i will go to my 
basic one and let me copy this dependencies and one point you should make sure we should not copy all the dependencies from other folder we should copy only the required dependencies okay so now what i will do is i will copy all of them and i'll take it out which is not required okay so let me paste it here and close this okay so what and all i do need so this plugin part we will talk later on okay plugin we don't need as of now uh these plugins are required definitely but not as of now so i'll skip that uh i would need this particular api selenium api i'm using the selenium version 4 alpha 6 release let me check if i get the latest update because i did check that uh, last month The stable release i believe it is yeah it is not released yet still it is an alpha release but i find it as a more stable i don't find uh, any instability or kind of big bugs which i can locate so that should be good to use for me now and the compatible test ng version i use is 7.1.4 web driver manager i think there should be some update for web driver manager and we should always prefer the updated version of web driver manager okay i'll tell you why uh okay so i see 4.2.0 is released so let me change the version to 4.2.0 so you see the biggest advantage of maven is i need not to download the dependencies and in, uh, um, basically add it in the build path simply change the version that's it earlier it was 4.0 and now it is 4.1 you see it is automatically downloading it okay now why i said is we should get the latest version for web driver manager is because under your web driver manager uh, <coughs> your browser version browser versions are specified let's say my chrome browser is getting upgraded to version uh, 75 from 74 or firefox version is getting upgraded from 60 to 58 something like that okay so as and when we get the newer version of the driver there would be newer version of my executable as well and that is something coded within this web driver manager right we use web driver manager for dependency uh, management right our driver executable management basically so in order to get the latest driver executable or latest browser which you have in your machine we should keep it as a latest one if you have something like okay you are not going to upgrade your browser or it will not get upgraded automatically to the latest versions or something then you may use uh, whatever compatible with your browsers okay extend report not required as of now but in some time maybe uh, after we finish few sessions we might be needing this because this is this is the reporting which we are going to use okay or i may see let's see if i can uh, incorporate some other type of record because you already talked about extend report but i feel it as a quite comfortable and good we should not focus more on these kind of stuff rather as i always say we should focus more on finding out the defects making my test cases more uh, efficient and in better way so that it will identify more number of defects rather than these cosmetic things but yeah even this is a bit important from management point of view so that they see good uh, dashboards and all apache poi definitely i would be needing these two dependencies because i would be reading my test data from excel spreadsheets Okay, so as of now, I am good with the dependencies. There is no useless dependencies and uh, plugins should be fine. I would be needing only two plugins, compiler plugin and surefire plugin, which I would be talking again in details when I talk about this um, uh, surefire plugin where how to parameterize your test engine.xml. But for now, this should be good enough. Let me close this. And uh, now you see. Uh, it has already created one folder uh, structure for maven dependencies and here you see all the selenium dependencies got downloaded automatically now i see there are some framework uh, where all these dependencies are uh, included into your pom.xml like dependency for firefox driver for ie driver for gecko driver for like which are which are not required they all are internally referred by selenium java okay so if you put the dependency for this main selenium java internally it will automatically download all these dependencies so adding them separately is not required at all it is unnecessary addition into your pom.xml okay so great 
Now let me do one thing. Let me copy my test engine.xml as well. We will modify it later on, but for now I am just copying it into my basic level framework. Sorry, advanced level framework. Okay. Now from my basic level framework, I did created these three packages: page objects, reusable component, and test space. I would be creating the same here. So I'll go to source main Java and let me create the first package as page objects. Again, the naming could be different. But uh, it should be something meaningful what you are going to put it into that particular package. So I say page objects. My next one was uh, reusable components, or few people call it as a utilities, or could be anything. Okay, I call it as a reusable component. Reusable components. And next one, I'll call it as a test base. So in test base, I'm not going to create only one class this time. It would be more test base because I'm creating a, a thread safe framework. For that, I would be needing thread safe web driver, thread safe uh, extend report object, and uh, thread safe object for my. Mm, it would be for my data driven test that is Excel object as well should be thread safe. So let's see what and all thread safe things we need. Okay, so these three things are enough for now. Uh, in fact, we can add more things into reusable components or you can prefer to add a few more packages. So it, it depends on how you are going to create. But I keep these simple things pretty simple. Okay, what next we had under source test Java? We had some, we have actual test cases basically, right? So here I'll create some dummy package. Okay, so I'll say tests for now. I'll just simply say it as a test. That's fine. We'll modify it later on. Now there are two packages source main Java and source test, uh, sorry, source main resources and source test resources. Okay, now what did I added under source test resources? That is the data required for my, uh, not the data, yeah, but the additional resources required for my test execution so that is going to be my test data plus configurations things whatever i need okay so what i'll do is i will simply copy these two things let me copy these two things into my source test resources under source main resources we would be putting let me delete this excel okay i don't want this so under source main resources i can add the things which i need for uh main resources basically like if i'm using sql i would be putting the screenshots and few more things okay so if if it comes in between i'll explain you that okay but as of now uh it looks pretty good to me now this config uh config dot properties we need to update so the browser what you're going to use let's say i'm going to use chrome only what url you are going to use so yeah here is my application detail so this is my url basically which i am going to use uh, you can refer my previous video where i explained about how can i install this qdpm app locally give me a minute let me copy this okay login is copied now there are a couple of username and password okay so let's see what and all we need we are going to put it here and we have some database details as well so we'll put all this thing into my config.properties as and when it is required okay but for now we are good to start okay so that's fine so now in my next video i'll create a page objects for one test case in fact, in video, I'll just show you a couple of and then I'll create all of them and then we'll continue. Okay, so I think that's it for this video. Stay tuned for next. Thank you.